I want to start with all of you. We'll start with Rufus. It's a hell of a name. Honest to God. It's one of the best names I've it's, ever seen in Q. It's a great Q. name. Rufus, your thoughts on Jared Goff? Is he the guy for the future? What do you think the Lions should do with him, buddy? All right. First, I'm going to admit, I, I, I thought he could play. I thought Goff could play, but I didn't think he was going to be as good as he is now. And I absolutely think we should keep him. He has a good grasp on the offense, he, which makes up for the athleticism part. I know we all would like that running quarterback, yada, yada. But I think right now him and Ben Johnson, they pretty much, I think, you can need to see it. Jared Goff knows where to go with the ball. He, he gets his reads fast, and he knows where to go. And I don't think we should mess with that chemistry. I think it's, it's spot on. We go defense. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm in lo- I, I'm in lockstep with you. I think he's been even better than anybody could have ever imagined this season in Detroit. Having said that, is it you're going to let his contract run out over the next two seasons after this year, or are you looking to extend him before the next start of the next season or at the end of next season? Uh, what is your plan for Jared Goff? Uh, that's a good question. So depending on what he does this upcoming year, I would absolutely sign him if he has. So you're going to make him play out. You're going to make him play out next year before you even consider it, correct? Yes. You and I are on the same page, my friend. Yeah, we have two years, and he's like what, twenty eight or something? Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. All right, I love it, man. Thank you for calling in, Rufus. Appreciate you, man. Well done. Appreciate having. Well done. Hey, All right, let's. Rufus go has a good head on his shoulders. That was no, that was really good, actually. To yeah. be honest with Rufus, you, that was very fair. He came out guns blazing. Yeah. I love that. Right to backed it, it up. Well got done, right to man. it. Well done. Let's go to Brian. Brian, you're on the morning Woodward show. What do you got for us this morning, Brian? You guys hear me? Yep, yep. Perfect. Hey, man, it's going to be hard to uh, follow up a phone call from a guy named Rufus. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good but, luck. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. So, um. <clears throat> regards to the Lions and uh, Jared Goff, um, I would definitely, um, I think I would extend the guy personally. You know, the thing is, if you really think about it, isn't it just shocking, you know, how well the guy has played when you put a competent um, running game and a good supporting staff around the guy? I think when he was at the Rams, honestly, I don't really think, uh, <clears throat> you know, he had, a, he had some good wide receivers around him, but he just really never had a running game. And to be honest with you, Sean McVay just really doesn't have uh, – his offense has never really been predicated around having a strong, solid running game. It just amazes me how people were just willing to kind of discard Jared Goff. But, you know, with the Lions, he's kind of come back to life because he's had such a strong running game. And I just think that that's uh, something you should think about with a lot of quarterbacks. I would personally I would personally extend the guy, go in the draft, get get some solid defensive players, and then go from there because he's, I think he's just proven to you that, you know, he's, uh, when he has a great offensive line, he has a competent running game and a, and a, a good offensive coordinator, look at what he's done. Brian, I'll say this. Uh, 2018 golf with the Rams was slinging the ball everywhere. I think that was probably the best the Rams were ever with golf. They had Todd Gurley. The offensive line was one of the better ones in the league. You had Brandon Cooks. You had a Cooper Cup. You had some good tight ends. It was it was a balanced offense. But what you've seen this year is, has been nothing short of exceptional. Very reminiscent of the Rams back in 2018. Uh, an unknown, undersized wide receiver, Cooper Cup, Amon Ross St. Brown. Uh, you have a running game that's a two-headed backfield with Swift and, and Jamal Williams, but that doesn't make your point any less true. Whether you extend him or not, I'm not sure yet, to be honest with you, but the idea of taking a quarterback and sitting him, I don't mind that. Is it this year? Is it next year? To be honest with you, I haven't really made that decision yet, but Goff, to me, has earned the right to be the starting quarterback next year, and I think the the draft strategy should be all in on defense Get this to be a top 18, top 17 defense by next year. And if you're able to do that with this top five, top seven offense, I mean, you're looking at a division title next year, no? Yeah. Oh, for sure. I definitely agree. I think that they should be contending for the NFC North next year. You have no idea what's going to – with regards to other teams, you have no idea what's going to happen with Aaron Rodgers. You know, the Bears are way, way behind. Uh, the Vikings, you know, they, they still look pretty solid, but who knows for how much longer um, Kirk Cousins is going to be good. I would focus on defense. I would maybe, as far as offensive pieces, maybe try to get Jared Goff a, a solid tight end. Uh, see if you can get one, you know, towards maybe the you know the second or middle of third round. Good tight ends are hard to come by. And again, focus on defense, and um, and they they should 
they should be solid. Keep the pieces, keep the culture, you know. Um, Dan, uh, Dan Ecast Campbell got to keep that culture going and uh, in the right direction. And I think that they'll be uh, they'll be going uh, they'll be going in the right direction. And the, the hopes will be high for the Lions. All so, right. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you for taking my time. Appreciate call, you, Brian. Well done, man. Anytime. You're welcome back anytime. Thank you. All right. Great. Have a good day, guys. Yep. Yep. You yep, too. You too. Kind of what I'm expecting, for the most part, with people. I think everybody sees, hey, he's not the problem. Why are we talking about him? Right. Go defense. Let's complete the team. Get linebackers. Get secondary players. Surround him more. And, yes, if Ben Johnson leaves, you're going to ask questions, of course. I don't think it's this year. So why am I concerned? All in on defense, Jeff, and try to have a good team next year. And the only thing I, I would you know, go back with is extending him right now. But, again... Uh, you can make the same argument at the same time of t- tomorrow's price may not be yesterday's price. So if he keeps yep. playing well and you wait to extend fair. him, you might have to pay the price for it. That is fair. Let's go to Abe. Abe, you're on the morning show. Uh, your Jets absolutely suck for not beating the Seahawks. Shame <laughs> on you. Shame on your franchise. Shame on Zach Wilson banging other dudes' moms. Uh, Mike shame White. on you. Uh, my team is the worst in football. They, <laughs> they, just, they suck. As they, they're they're not watchable. They're not even watchable. And I've been saying this all week to my to my Jets buddies. If Zach Wilson starts that game, all of us are sitting around saying, you know, if Mike White starts, we, we would have won that. Uh, maybe Mike White's not the guy, but someone that might be the guy is your own Jared Goff. Now, Adam, you keep bringing up uh, Alex Smith, and the reason Alex Smith is who Alex Smith is and known by is because they took that shot at Patrick Mahomes. They saw the guy that they thought could be the future. So what it comes down to is, do you take the quarterback this year? Do you take it next year? Do you extend all this and that? What it comes down to is, do you see the guy? And if that guy is there, you take him. It doesn't matter how much time is left on Goff's contract. Yep. doesn't matter any of that. If you see him there this year, you take him. If you got to move up to take him, you, you do it. If you don't see him this year, you wait. And there's nothing wrong with waiting. Don't just t- – trust me, I know from experience, and you as Lions fans do as well, don't just take a quarterback for the sake of taking I a quarterback. I agree 100%, yeah. Abe. I agree 100%. There's nothing more important than – again, what, what does Jared Goff allow you to do? If he's playing at this level, what does he allow you to do? Continue to build your roster. And you can make the decision when you're all in on the quarterback. Let's say I'm Brian Holmes right 45 now. He's no, not a forty-five million dollar. He's not a forty-five million dollar a year guy. He's not. He's not demanding Lamar money. No. Nope. So in the in the time in the time of the quarterback, paying him thirty million dollars a year isn't extraordinary. It's really how much are you paying the quarterback room, not the starting quarterback. How much are you paying the entire room? How much of that is taking up your cap space? If you're paying Jared Goff thirty million and then a backup another eleven, now you cannot go get a first-round quarterback because the cap space is going to be too much for not Patrick Mahomes' type of level of play. But if you have Jared Goff and uh, a Tim Boyle type of nobody and a first-round quarterback, now you're into something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, Abe, one, I appreciate the call, buddy. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll, I'll say this. Jared Goff affords you the time to make that decision. And if I'm Brad Holmes and it's Will Levis, I'm pulling the trigger tomorrow. And if I'm Brad Holmes and it's somebody in the 25 class, well, I got Jared Goff under contract. Right. Why do I have to worry? Right. Why do I have to force myself to do something maybe I'm not ready to do or I don't want to do? And that's the luxury. You look at the Jets. Abe, this is a perfect example. You guys forced yourselves to take Zach Wilson. And I think Robert Sala would much rather have a Panay Sewell, a Jamar Chase, he would much have rather have a lot of those guys than Zach Wilson sitting there on the bench right now. So.